CTW Automation here, and in this video, we want to show you the feature called Multi Point Rod Force. Now, you all should be aware of running the standard Rod Force test, where it stops at mid stroke, pauses for a certain amount of time, measures the load cell, goes to the other side, pauses. Measures the load cell. We add those two numbers together, divide by two, and call that the rod force. The basic the, the amount of force that whatever internal pressure exists is pushing on the rod. There's some static spring-like mechanism inside that's pushing that rod out. Probably the gas chamber, but there's certainly other things in there that can be doing the same thing statically. And that will affect the way your damper curve appears that's why we measure it and try to remove it now a lot of people ask about running a multi-point gas test uh, a rod force test so that in case there's a spring like a coil over or like motorcycle dampers and forks that actually still have springs either inside in another cartridge um, sometimes there's even uh, other things, large gas chambers inside a damper, all these things can show up when you collect dynamically based on the position. You know, going from top uh, bottom dead center to top dead center, you will certainly see a spring of force adding to it. So, for example, you look at the graphs that are on the screen and we're looking at force first displacement. And you can see this red trace here is a coil over damper that I ran and we only did the rod force test so from bottom dead center to top dead center it has a rising rate there is a that spring keeps adding to the system no matter what because all we did is test right at mid stroke and took the force there so we can even let's see we can even by unchecking this box that's that RF column it puts the rod force back in so there's the spring with just the forces at mid stroke. And when I say take it back out, it moves it back down. So when you see this effect, there is a spring or a spring like uh, device inside that is causing your data to look skewed, basically um, rotated. And you would love to be able to do a test, keep the spring involved use the multi-point rod, rod force test, and that way you don't have to take it apart, you don't have to take the spring off, you can test it all as a system, so it's very helpful. So we're gonna show you how to do that, and we're going to show you uh, a few other things so you can see it and use it to your advantage. So now in Test Builder, you should all be familiar with this, we have our standard rod force, where it stops uh, in mid-stroke, for one second, uh, up to four, depending on what you want. And the speed is the speed that it moves from one side to the other. So if we were to pick that test and come over to test executor, go ahead and run it. Does the time warm up and then it goes into the rod force and it's gonna just do a one point rod force test, basically at mid stroke. And you know the spring as it keeps compressing in that damper, keeps adding more and more force the whole time. And this way we will show you how to use the multi-point rod force and remove that effect. Run through its little speed, It'll create a little PVP, and we'll have our data. All right, so this is rod force with spring demo. I've already run this just to make sure it works, but uh, I'll call this one A so you can see it live. And we'll come in here and we're going to get rid of uh, this one because this is the one I ran before, make sure it works. So now we have A on the screen and we're looking at the the one inch one. Okay, so now how to use the multi point. You go ahead and delete that out of your test. Come over here and do rod force multi point. And we're going to drag it up just 
after start recording and as always my mouse goes too far all right computer's deciding to do something else at the same time okay rod force test so settle time same thing the speed that it moves in between now i happen to be using a very small dyno so i'm going to move slow you do not have to do that with uh, a normal dyno, an RD2, an RD3, etc. But position table, here's where we uh, the fun begins. So we click this arrow, we select number of points. Now, I think seven is the maximum, and, and maybe if you're on an RD7, RD10, you got a 100 millimeters, you might want to do that. Five points on a 50 millimeter stroke should be all you need. Uh, I'm even on a smaller stroke than that. I'm down at a half inch, so I'm going to use three points. Basically, I'll get a, a mid-stroke, somewhere close to top dead center, somewhere close to bottom dead center. Now, again, you can see that's going to be a linear fit. Uh, if you have a very, you know, the, the second part would be if you have a very, very progressive buildup, that is, again, going to be harder to model because it needs a lot more points. You can use five to seven points, but uh, in the end, it's still going to try to model that line. It might not be perfect, but it's going to be a lot closer than just doing that point at mid-stroke. So I figure out how many points I want, and I just do calculate positions. And you can see um, I'm on, uh, this is bottom dead, close to bottom dead center, close to top dead center at mid-stroke. That looks fine. I get my three points. I get to take the effects of the spring involved in the damper, in the, in the data. So that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and save as. So I get a new test. I'm going to call it that because I already set that up. Yep, we'll replace it. And then we'll go to test executor and we will load up multi point for you and we'll run that test. And then we'll start to talk about the data that we see. So go ahead and it still does its warm up. But now you're going to hear that pause, that right there, you're gonna hear that uh, several times because it's stopping on the way up and it's stopping on the way down at those points that we created in the table. And the software is adding all those points up and it's making a, uh, a linear estimation based on displacement of what force to remove. Because you know with the standard rod force, we remove that force that we measure. The multipoint, we have a, a linear line based on the position of the damper, basically as it's moving, compressing, and extending. So removing that force then. <clears throat> Go ahead. And so this is the multipoint with spring demo, and I'll call this uh, A. Save, so now I have all my data and I've got my A so I'll get rid of this so I just have that let me get rid of that so I have my tests with and without well with the rod force at one point and the multi point rod force and we don't need the pvp components of this so so you have you can see how the one that we use just the rod force has a progression from left to right where that spring is still being added in. And in some of these other speeds show that better. You can see there's a distinct growth from top to, or bottom dead center to top dead center. And if we look at the one where the multi-point was involved, that growth has been taken out. We have created, like I said, we've created forces along the displacement and we try to remove them to try to remove that spring 
That's static spring-like effect. We cannot remove the dynamic part of that. But we can remove the static part as best as possible here. And you can see it, it levels it out. It levels it out because we're taking that spring out of it. Now to further show you um, what we mean, and this makes it very visible. So if I go to this, the, the rod force test, the single point, and I put the gas test back in, you can see whatever force we measured for that spring here, it moves it back up. And we do this, it takes it back out. That's a very good visual way to see what's going on there. And I do the same thing with this. And it moves it up the screen. Same thing. So now we will look at the force first velocity here. Go back to that for speed, a little hard to see. Um, so the red one is the multipoint. So it's trying to take the spring rate out based on several points. And then we have the one where we just take the spring rate out at one point. Now, this is what a graph looks like if a coil over or something with a big spring overpowering the damper looks like because peak for or peak force doesn't happen at peak velocity because there's a spring so it keeps making it so those are the things you get to see um, and you can see how effective the multi-point is in actually giving you data that you can use even though you didn't take the spring off and as we see these you can see just how much that spring keeps adding to the graph um, just by using the rod force. Now this data is, should be the data, this is the same damper without a spring. So I'm going to take the rod force one off because I think we've proven that doing that single point really does a poor job of giving you a good curve that you can use without the spring. So now we can just compare this blue is no spring on the damper. Same test and then this is with the spring. Now by using the multi-point you can see we've done a very good job of getting to pretty close to the damper itself. And just to prove how this works, if I now say put the rod force back in, all of a sudden, not only does it move up the screen, but what we would we would call hysteresis, uh, that spring, in this case, it's really that spring is being added back in. You can see it opens up and it moves it up the graph. You can see how good of a job it's doing just based on that. And that's a very... Very neat little feature we've added to the software. So, and just keep showing you a few things here. If I would just look at the right data. So, again, a further visualization. This is a coilover with the multi-point rod force and we've removed all of that data and if I put it back in all of a sudden you can see up oh, there's the spring again so it's a pretty neat way to see this that's how you use this new command rod force multi-point and that's how you see it in the data so use that to your advantage especially you motorcycle guys bicycle guys people with very large gas chambers this is for you I hope you've enjoyed it. CTW.